What's going on guys, Jimmy here today and we are gonna be doing a test. You see, the camera that I'm filming this video on right now is my Sony A7S III, a very expensive camera and it films incredible 4K footage. The lens that I'm using is the Voigtlander 15 mm f4.5. It's a prime super wide angle lens, it's a rectilinear lens which means that all of the lines are straight, even though it is so wide. The reason why I wanna do this test is, well, because this little GoPro Hero 10 Black shoots 5.3K footage. That's incredible. But it is a tiny sensor in comparison. This camera is a full frame sensor that I'm filming this on, and the sensor in this, I don't even know how small it is. It's absolutely tiny. But everyone has these because they are wide angle they're great they're just little bricks and they shoot 5.3k footage and everything below that so i thought why not perform a test between a camera such as this sony a7s3 and something like this gopro hero 10 black let's see if the gopro can come anywhere near the quality that I'm getting off of this Sony a7S III. By the way, I'm filming in 4K. It's XAVCS and it is 422 10-bit. So it's H.264. I believe the GoPro Hero 10 Black is only using the HEVC or H.265 codec when recording at 5.3K. It's just a little bit different in how it processes and compresses the footage. But right now, let's just test this camera with this lens in this setting with the GoPro Hero 10 Black. The GoPro, we're gonna test in basically 5.3K, uh, 24 frames a second, you know, bit rate set to high, uh, flat color profile, because if you've seen any of my other videos, which I'll link up here, Flat color profile is the only thing I want to film in. The other uh, vibrant and natural just, in my opinion, look horrible. So with that being said, today is not a super cinematic day. The light is kind of almost straight up in the sky, so the lighting's not that great. But there is a lot of light to go around. There's light everywhere. There's no shortage of light. It's just not in the best spot. It's not golden hour. It's not, you know, early morning light where the sun is real low. So. Don't worry about the lighting so much, except that there is plenty of it. The only real things I wanna be testing now are really just the look of the overall frame. Does one frame, like for example from the Sony A7S III, look way better, just worlds better than something like this? I'm imagining that's gonna be the case, but you never know. Um, and also the sharpness and the overall clarity of the picture. What does it look like from a $3,500 camera to essentially a $300 camera? You know how GoPro does their pricing. But yeah, so I mean, that's a huge price difference. And obviously this has a fixed lens, fixed focal point, and uh, the lens I'm using now, I can actually adjust the focal point. So what you're seeing is that lens right now opened up at f4.5, and the focal point is about just over two and a half feet, which I think is where I'm kind of at from that sensor. I might actually be a little bit too far, so I'm not sure if I'm perfectly in focus, but I should be pretty good. So let's start the testing. Okay, we are now rocking and rolling. We got the GoPro Hero 10 Black filming in 5.3K, all the best settings, bit rate set to high, uh, sharpness is set to medium, color profile is set to flat. Uh, so 5.3K, 24 frames a second. The Sony is filming in 4K. Like I said before, it is 10-bit 422, and the codec is H.264. So while these two cameras are filming me at the exact same time in the exact same spot, try to focus on, I don't know, clarity, sharpness, uh, which overall frame looks more professional. Do they both look very similar, or is there a massive difference? Uh, the sharpness is something that I've been so curious about the sharpness on the 5.3k versus the sharpness on the uh, Sony's 4k sensor 12 megapixel sensor there's many more megapixels on the GoPro Hero 10 than there are on the Sony the footage coming out of the Sony is absolutely gorgeous and I've been having to do some work and trying to figure out how to get the footage on the GoPro to look pretty decent and I think I've got it dialed in but this is another, just one of those tests I wanted to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and step out of frame and you can see what the scene looks like behind me. Just so you know, the Sony lens is uh, focused to infinity, opened up at f4.5.
Okay, what did you think? Go ahead and comment below which one looked better. This time we're filming with the GoPro and the sharpness setting set to high. So this is actually gonna be the very first time that I filmed with that sharpness setting set to high on the GoPro. I totally disliked the low setting, thought it just looked way too soft, way too mushy, got rid of all sorts of detail. So the medium was where I thought would be perfect, but this is the first time setting the sharpness to high on the GoPro. So let me step out of frame and now we can compare the two scenes. Okay, what did you think about that? That was the GoPro in the flat color profile and the only thing I changed was put the sharpness from medium to high. Comment down below, which one did you think looked better? Did you think the GoPro looked like absolute trash or was it holding its own against the Sony? Right now, we're filming with the sharpness level back down to medium on the GoPro, but I have changed the color setting from flat to natural. And I just wanted to do this so you can see the massive difference in color between flat and natural. And what's really interesting, we'll do this next, Going from natural to vibrant really has almost, almost, there is a difference, but it's almost imperceptible. You almost can't tell. Let me step out of frame. Okay, so what did you think about that natural color profile on the GoPro compared to the Sony? Let me know, again, down in the comment section below, was natural terrible or did you perhaps like it? Did you like one or the other in terms of Sony uh, overall picture versus the GoPro? I'm imagining that the Sony is gonna just blow the GoPro out of the water. It should, it costs many times more. But you never know on a day like this when there's plenty of light for both cameras, you just never know. Right now we're doing another comparison and I have switched that GoPro natural color profile to vibrant. So now we can get a sense for the difference between natural and vibrant. And from what I've seen already on this camera, the difference is barely there. I mean, there is a difference, you can tell, but it is so minute. I don't know why you would pick one over the other, um, ex you know, except for obviously to have the colors just be a little more vibrant like the name says. But again, I think this goes to show you the difference in dynamic range from flat to either of the other ones. The flat profile is the only profile I want to film in on the GoPro because you get to retain a lot of that dynamic range. And sometimes, sometimes on a good day like this, you might not have to do that much post-processing. Sometimes the colors just look really good. Uh, so hopefully we have a good example from the Sony A7S III to the GoPro. This is the same scene. Let me step out of the scene so you can see what this one looks like between the Sony and the GoPro. And the GoPro is obviously on vibrant, like I just said. So. Okay. We are now out of that vibrant color setting. We're back down into flat. And I did change one thing, which you could probably tell right away when you saw this scene. And that is changing from the linear lens, which is what I've been using before. I probably should have changed that earlier. But all the footage you had been seeing before on the GoPro is with the linear lens, which just means it's a little bit tighter. And you probably noticed that the Sony footage was wider. I was able to capture more of the scene. Now, however, the GoPro is set on super view. So as wide as it can be, and it is actually wider than what I'm seeing from the back of the screen on the Sony. We'll have to look and see how much wider because the Sony is a 15 millimeter, but I swear on the GoPro's lens back there on the menu system, it says that super view is 16 millimeters. So they should be comparable within a millimeter, but it looks like the GoPro is actually wider than the Sony. So let me step out of frame and you can get a good view of what this all looks like.
Okay, so this last test here, we have set the GoPro to 4K. So this is a very even test. Both cameras are filming in 4K, 24 frames a second. The GoPro uh, has the lens set to wide, and so it should more closely match the frame that I'm seeing on the back of the Sony a7S III. The one thing you might notice between the GoPro and the Sony's footage is like I was saying about the lens on the Sony, that Voigtlander, it is rectilinear. So the trees are vertical, whereas the trees at the edge of the frame on the GoPro, you might see them kind of bowing in a little bit. And that's because of that just wide fisheye kind of look that is non-existent on the Voigtlander. So that may also account for the difference in focal length there, even though the Voigtlander is a 15 millimeter. And when I was at super wide or wide, it's saying about 16, the GoPro seems to be a little bit wider. And it must be because of the rectilinear adjustment there on the Voigtlander. So let me step out of frame and you can test and compare. Okay, and one last test here. I am now holding this GoPro in vlog mode. It's being handheld by my left hand there. We are back at 5.3K, 24 frames a second. All the same settings I was telling you about before. Color profile flat, bitrate high, sharpness set to medium. And so the point of this is to test the lens on the GoPro and the focal position that they put it in. You see, this lens might be a 16 millimeter lens or whatever they say but it is focused at a certain point. And I'm very curious what point that is. Am I sharp? This is as sharp as this camera records in, 5.3K. Am I sharp? Is the lens focused to about here, or is it focused off to infinity, in which case I'm actually not that sharp? I may look like I'm in focus, but is the background actually sharper than I am? If that's the case, then we know that the lens is just simply focused to infinity and I look sharp or look like I'm somewhat in focus because of how small the sensor is and the aperture is probably like an F100, which basically means everything's in focus. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna hold the Sony camera now and we can see the difference between something like this GoPro and the quality of this footage and you know basically what this is, which is good for what it is, but versus a high dollar camera, just to really get a sense for what exactly is the difference. Now on the Sony, I'm gonna focus the lens to the appropriate distance that I am from the you know, camera. So you're gonna be able to see a slight blur in the background, uh, but I'll test it at both f4.5, which is the lens wide open, and about f16 to try to match what this GoPro does and so hopefully everything will be in focus. All right guys, so now I'm filming with the Sony a7S III. I have this Voigtlander lens focused to just over two and a half feet, so I should be in focus. The f-stop is f16, so everything should be in focus. The background should be in focus, I should be in focus, but this is a full frame sensor, so that might not be the case. So one thing I'm curious about is obviously what does the frame look like compared to the GoPro? But the other thing I'm curious about is the stabilization. The GoPro has phenomenal stabilization, and that's definitely a leg up for the GoPro. Uh, but this one does have sensor shift stabilization, but that's about it. And so it doesn't do anywhere near as good of a job as the GoPro does, but it is a wide angle lens. So does it look shaky? And if it does look shaky, does it even matter? I don't know. So I definitely wouldn't go walking with this, but if I was just standing in one spot holding it, I believe this is okay. Um, looking at the screen on the Sony, I can see that I'm kind of centered in the frame. So if I were to wanna put myself into the third of the frame, right, the rule of thirds, um, do I look stretched out a little bit? Uh, does it look awkward and weird? I'm literally pointing the camera way out here, um, but I can see the very edge of my uh, screen there and tell that I'm still in frame. Uh, I have this all set to manual uh, you know, in terms of all my exposures and everything. So I'm hoping I'm not blown out, but that is a look with the Voigtlander at 16 millimeter. Now let me open the lens up to f4.5. I'm gonna have to increase my shutter speed pretty dramatically to like 1 800th of a second just to be able to film and not be blown out. Okay, so now I am filming with this 15 millimeter lens. 
opened up all the way to f4.5, it should be focused about here, which means the background should be somewhat blurred out. Uh, there's probably a vignette because of the wide aperture on this wide angle lens, but that may even look pretty good. Now, I was talking about the shutter speed, and that I have set to 1 1,000th of a second right now, and that is just to make sure that I'm not blown out, you know, my skin and everything isn't blown out from the sun because the sun is just in a terrible position right now for, for filming. So what do you think, guys? My arm is starting to hurt holding this giant camera up, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out, but let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the comparison between the GoPro and the Sony a7S III. This is the first time I've done anything like this, so I myself am very curious to get back to editing and see the difference between the two cameras. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing. All right, guys, I'm Jimmy, and I'll see you in the next one.